Before I start this rant, I would like to say that Undertale is one of the greatest games that I've ever played in my entire life. It has amazing soundtrack, great characters, and awesome gameplay. By the end of the game, you feel a deep emotional connection to all of these characters deep in your heart, and in a way, you could actually consider them virtual friends. I love this game, and I've never had a game affect me so incredibly than Undertale. That being said, STOP DOING CRITCHY SHIT! Cue the punch! Now before the Undertale fandom chastises me for my opinions, at least let me give an explanation for why I think their fandom is so cringy, alright? And I've developed a special checklist to help me determine whether a fandom is cringy or not. Does the fandom quote their movie, video game, or TV show outside of their fandom appropriately? Does the fandom draw fan art? If so, does the amount of bad fan art outweigh the good? Does the fandom write fanfiction? If so, does the amount of bad fanfiction outweigh the good? Does the fandom cross over their famous and popular characters into popular memes? Does the fandom blow the characters like stereotypes out of proportion? How divided is the fandom on fan theories? Does the fandom agree that there's a part of their fandom that they do not like to talk about? Now, if you answered yes to five out of seven of these questions, then congratulations, your fandom is cringy. So let's take this checklist and apply it to the Undertale fandom, shall we? Does the fandom quote the game outside of the fandom respectively? They do, but that's understandable though. Undertale is a very quotable game. It's got quotes galore in it. It's got memes galore. It's got references everywhere. So it's understandable why someone would want to quote something outside of the fandom. But every single time I go onto a video and it says the need to subscribe to Gay Butt Poop 69 fills you with determination. I just kind of want to slap you. So that's a yes for that. Does the fandom draw fan art and does the bad outweigh the good? Well, that's a yes and a no. And I'll tell you why. It's a yes because the amount of Undertale fandom that I see on a daily basis is just astonishing. At least 12 really good pictures a day. But that's where the no comes from. For every nine good pictures that I see of an Undertale thing, there's always one that just looks like this. But that's a nine to one ratio, so we'll count this as a no for now, so you get this one. Does the fandom write fanfiction and does the amount of bad fanfiction outweigh the good? That's a solid yes on both. Now before you chastise me for saying, oh hey, you just didn't find the good ones. The good ones are just right here, you missed them. No, I've read the good ones, okay? The problem is I had to sift through a lot of bad ones to get there. It's a solid five to one ratio that I don't enjoy. And the fact that that exists just means that it's cringy in its own self. So yes, that's a yes on both. Is there Undertale memes or memes related to Undertale? Does the fandom blow all of the stereotypes of the characters way out of proportion? I can guarantee you this is a solid yeah. Because when I was sifting through all of these good fan fictions, I noticed that all the characters were just being themselves too much. No matter what, Papyrus is on that spaghetti. And I know he's on that spaghetti in the game, but even more so in all the fan and stuff. Sans makes nothing but puns and he's nothing but OP. Flowey is just nothing but an asshole. It gets old after a while. Undyne's being a butch lesbian again. So what? These characters aren't just their stereotypes, all right? Sans makes about a total of five minutes worth of jokes in the game, and the rest is just regular dialogue that's lighthearted. Papyrus does other meme things besides spaghetti. Flowey whispers advice to other characters sometimes, and Undyne plays the piano. They're not all their stereotypes. Toby Fox did not write these characters like this. If all the canon characters met the fanon characters, I bet you they would be fucking offended at the stereotypes that are being portrayed. Is the fandom divided on fan theories? Well, let me ask you this. Who the fuck is Gaster? How does Sans know about resets? And does Monster Kid have a sister? On top of that, what gender is Frisk? All these questions. Like, if I could get a solid, unified answer on this for each one of these questions, then I will be happy, all right? I'll give this a no. But you know what? Until then, it's a yes for me because I've seen so many contradictions and I've seen so many different stories, all right? It's a yes. 
And finally, does the fandom agree that there is something cringy and dark to their fandom that they'd rather not talk about? That answer is a solid yes. Congratulations, six out of seven. That's one more than five out of seven. That means the fandom is officially cancer. Kill the balloons, everybody. I get what you're going to say. Logan, this checklist is fucking biased. Not a single fandom can pass through this, Logan. What are you doing? You're just being a dick to the Undertale fandom. No fandom can pass this checklist. Well, you're wrong. Because I know that there's a fandom out there that is so uncancerous and awesome that it just, I don't even need to use the checklist, dude. You want to know the fandom? All right, Luke, drum roll, please. It's good enough. And the best fandom of Logan's life that he likes the most is... The Dark Souls fandom. That's right, the Dark Souls fandom. I fucking love the Dark Souls fandom. They haven't done a single thing to irk me at all, or annoy me, or make me think that they're cringy or cancerous. Everything that I've seen Dark Souls wise is just amazing. Uh, and if you don't believe me, let's just apply the checklist, all right? Does the fandom quote Dark Souls stuff outside of the fandom appropriately? Yes, they do quote it outside the fandom appropriately. Because whenever I see a quote, it's always just praise the sun. And there's nothing cringy about praise the sun, all right? Is the fan art good? You bet your ass the fan art is good. It's about as on par as the Undertale fan art. Except I have not seen a single bad fan art for Dark Souls. Even the porn is good. Oh, I talk about the porn later. Cut out the porn bit. Are the fan fictions good? Well, who the fuck cares? I checked on fanfiction.net and there's only been 600 fanfictions since it first came out in 2011. However, only half a year has passed and there's been over 2.9 thousand Undertale fanfictions. And I promise you that a good amount of them are bad. But you're just gonna say, hey, you know what, Logan? You didn't read any of the fanfictions, so this one doesn't count. I'll give that to you. So that's two out of seven so far. Does the fandom do memes? Not really, no. In fact, besides Solaire, the term Get Good, and Giant Dad, there's not a single character in Dark Souls who is really all that meme-worthy. It's awesome. Does the fandom blow stereotypes way out of proportion for characters? Well, besides Solaire and his addiction for the sun, no. All the characters remain in character for all fan art, fan videos, and any fan tributes at all. It's awesome. You don't see any stereotypes anywhere. I love it. Is the fandom divided on fan theories? No! Because unlike other games, this game actually happens to, you know, spread out the lore evenly and nicely secretly so that it's all easily connectable. Unlike some other games, <coughs> Scott Cawthon, <coughs> oh, look at me, you have to press the tiles to get the secret fandom, or maybe someone killed someone, fuck you. And finally, is there a bad side to the Dark Souls fandom? Well, no. Because there's nothing grotesque or physically cringy about Dark Souls at all. Now, I know that you'll say, hey, Logan, what about the porn? Is the porn cringy? I know that there's porn of Dark Souls. The porn is not cringy at all because the Dark Souls characters are hot as shit. All right? You've got a big titty god. You got Man Eater Mildred. You got the Emerald Herald. You've got a fucking cat lady. You've got it all. Even like the fetishists who are like, but I like fat girls who fart. Well, you got like the demons and shit for that. You've got designated monsters to be gross for you and cringy for the fandom. Whereas in Undertale, you have a androgynous child, a spider lady, a fish lesbian, a neck beard, and your mom. Now, Toby Fox did not make Undertale for porn reasons, so it's understandable why the characters are not designed to be sexy. But because of that, all Undertale porn is really weird and not very enjoyable at all. Trust me, I've tried. So Undertales, please stop what you're doing for the sake of Toby. He asked for just one thing with the Phantom to do, okay? One thing, and we've already failed him. Please stop, we can still undo this and make it all good. Just. Stop doing the cringy things and just stop in general. I love you. So, hey, wasn't that a good video? Please don't chastise me for giving out my opinion. You watch my video for my opinion, and my opinion is the fandom is cringy. Now, please like my video because I did a good job explaining myself, and please comment down below how wrong I am. Also, you can subscribe to me or follow me on Twitter where I make more Undertale things. I do funny jokes. That's it. 
in which a fucking commercial for McDonald's and a minion just going, oh, God, oh, blah, 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 it makes you laugh like a fucking hyena. How does that fucking work? There's no humor in it. It's just baby noises. Are you, what are you, what are you fucking faggot? What are you fucking gay? Why is that so funny to you? Why are you just such a baby that fucking jingly keys ass minions are making you laugh? Luke, answer me this!